your team, you are deeply committed to them and they are deeply committed to you. They're showing up every day, you know, they're giving their life to this. And so are you. So let's have the best in you talk to the best in them. You're listening to the Profit by Design podcast, episode 32. You work hard in your business. On the Profit by Design podcast, we ask the big question, what has your business done for you lately? Hi, I'm Dr. Sabrina Starling, the business psychologist, the author of How to Hire the Best, and your co-host on the Profit by Design podcast. Weekly, my co-host, Mike Bruno, and I bring you tips, tools, and strategies from our own experiences and from the experiences of our guests who are entrepreneurial thought leaders and real-life entrepreneurs all to support you in making intentionally profitable and sustainable business decisions to live the lifestyle you desire. Profit designers, in just a moment, you're going to listen in on a conversation Mike and I have with John Bates. John was recently here with us at Breakthroughs on the Bayou four-week vacation retreat. He was our VIP day workshop leader, and he is so gifted at helping us get out of our own way. And on today's podcast, we only get a short time with him. I've had the privilege of getting to train with him over the last year on at least three occasions now, and at the retreat he was with us for three days. So he has so much good stuff to share. What we get into on the podcast today just scratches the surface and I wish we could share more with you. He does give some incredible resources at the end and I sincerely hope you take him up on downloading those resources and pursuing the offers that he shares with you because I know so many of you personally who listen to the podcast, you have very important, powerful stories to communicate and share, I know that John can help you be even more powerful and effective in how you're communicating. So with that, I want to read you his formal bio. John Bates's why is to bring out what is awesome inside every person so it can live in the world and make a real difference. Based in human evolutionary biology and neurophysiology, John's principles of leadership, communication, and influence show you not only what works, but why it works, making them easy to apply to your unique style so you can be even more effective. John trains and coaches C-level leaders at global organizations like Johnson & Johnson, NASA, including all the active astronauts, Accenture, Boston Scientific, and more, including our Breakthroughs on the Bayou retreat participants. And after he left Breakthroughs on the Bayou, his next stop was Necker Island with Richard Branson and a small group of world leaders. That is just the, so cool what he is doing in the world and the impact that he is having. He is regularly recommended by his clients as one of the best leadership communication trainers and executive coaches working today, and I can vouch for that. John is also the most prolific TED format trainer in the world, bringing powerful executive presence, storytelling, and Jedi-like persuasion skills to top teams, world leaders, entrepreneurs, scientists, and those on the light side of the force who want to have a lasting, memorable impact and effortlessly influence. John's background was as a founder, co-founder, or very early stage employee at internet-related startup companies like BigWords.com, which flamed out in the dot-com bomb, or GoldStar.com, which is still rocking and rolling. John would always end up with the title Evangelist. He has raised several hundred million dollars with his various teams in Silicon Valley and beyond, and now shares his experience from the School of Hard Knocks with his clients all over the world. So with that, let's dive in. So, John, you were with us just a few weeks ago at Breakthroughs on the Bayou, and it's so wonderful to have you back. I've actually had the privilege of working with you and training with you, I think, three times in the last year, and I attribute my ability to connect and communicate authentically in this past year. I really feel like I have grown in that, and you have been a big part of making that happen for me. When I brought you into the Breakthroughs on the Bayou Retreat and then asked you if you would be so kind as to be our VIP workshop leader, 
one of the main reasons I did that was because last year at the retreat, I had seen our participants really struggle when they had the opportunity to get on video and just practice sharing their stories and communicating their stories. And I was so aware of myself that I had that struggle myself and you had helped me work through that. So I really wanted you to do that with our retreat participants. And oh my gosh, you totally did that. You blew me away with the breakthroughs that you created this past time at the retreat. It was a blast. It was a <laughs> blast. You. That was just an absolute highlight of my life. Thank you. It was a highlight for us. And one of the things that you are so good at is getting us to be real very quickly and putting aside our monkeys, but strapping them into the back seat, those gremlins and the self-defeating chatter that we have in our head. You had a quote out on Facebook yesterday that really speaks to me. It gave me a lot of pause. And I think it's part of how you do what you do so well. So I want us to start there. You said, I have a lot of compassion. There's almost nothing you can do that's dumber than anything I did. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. Oh my. It, gives me, it gives me goosebumps to my wrists to hear you say that. And it also kind of makes me tear up and I mean, Sabrina, you know, like <laughs> we talk about getting real fast, like you just hit me right there. You know, I feel like I spent my whole life in the woods on some level. I was an early stage entrepreneur since 1994. I was always one of the co-founders, the founder, or basically a single digit employee. So I never worked at a big company ever. I was always in those small, cagey you know, internet companies. And I always had about, I swear for the majority of my adult life, I had over 50 grand in debt. I had millions of dollars worth of stock that never got liquid in any of those companies. And like, that was my life. And I got to a point where, you know, that was my situation. And then everything dried up, <laughs> you know, all the jobs that didn't pay enough that gave me lots of useless stock were gone. And that was about, you know, it was after the 2008 thing, but I feel like I was on the end of the whip of that. Like I didn't feel it when it was happening to everybody else, but then I was part of the aftershock effect of it and just got flipped off the end of that whip feel like. And I was looking around and I'm like, I just gotten married to Sharon. I wanted, you know, my wife whom I love, I think she's the coolest person I've ever met in my life. And I wanted to give her a great life. And I was, you know, all that. And all of a sudden, like nothing was happening. And I didn't know what was going to happen. And I spent a while looking back on my life, just really freaking out, thinking I had absolutely nothing worthwhile to share. You know, I didn't have any expertise in anything because I'd always been doing everything. And then it really hit me. Oh, you know, I've seen the difference I make coaching these TEDx speakers. And I've always kind of coached the people on my teams in public speaking. And I basically was a public speaker my whole life. Maybe I'll be a public speaker coach. And I, so I called my friends who would be the kind of people to hire that person. And they all said to a person, John, you don't want to do that. Public speaking coaches are a dime a dozen. Like that's a bottom of the barrel thing. Like you, that you're, you know, don't do that. And so I cried about it for about another month. And then, you know, here's a huge realization for me. I looked at what I had done in that realm, like the people that I had helped at TEDx events and the people I had coached who went on to win pitch contests and things as I was, you know, in, as I was working with them. And I said, you know what? I know I provide value doing this. I'm just going to do it anyway. Who cares if I make money? I know I provide value. And the funny thing is that it didn't happen overnight. That's for sure. Took about a year and a half, two years. And then all of a sudden I was kind of breaking even. Like I went further in debt for a year and a half. Two years I was kind of breaking even. Year three, I made more than I ever made in my life. Year four, I doubled that plus. Year five, I tripled that plus. And, you know, this is coming up on the end of year seven. And I kind of been bouncing around up in that arena since then. And what I realized is that when I was super focused on making money, I had debt. When I shifted the focus just a little bit, 
Now, look, it's good to make money. The funny thing about sustainability is you have to sustain it. I want to make money. But when I shifted the focus just a little bit from making money being the focus to providing value, that's when I made money. And it didn't happen overnight, but it certainly happened, you know? And I get what they say about speaker coaches. You know, I have done a, I'm really working right now. I feel like I've plateaued and I'm really working right now to try to explain the fact that the reason I've been so successful with this TED format coaching is because we go so much deeper than just, hey, you know, stop walking around, hold your hands like this, you know. The work that I do with people is super deep, really deep coaching, but that makes them much better presenters, you know. But I think that that's something that I have really taken on is when I'm focused on providing value, that's when I'm really in a sustainable way making money. You know, at Tap the Potential, one of our immutable laws is be a gift from your gifts. And that's one of my core values. And I have seen it myself in Tap the Potential and what I'm doing. The more I show up from trying to be a gift from my gifts and serving in that way and forget about money, I do want to make money, obviously, but shifting that focus, I've also seen the impact of that. And it's much more gratifying to work from that perspective. Your mission is so powerful. You bring out what is awesome inside of others so that it can live in the world and make a real difference. Yeah. How did you come to that? (laughs) You know, it's a good question. It's a funny story, I think. I was always the guy who had the soft skills. And I was always jealous of the people around me who had the hard skills. And I worked with a lot of those people because I was at these internet startups and, you know, I would go around doing what I did, the communications, the business development, everything. And I would try to prove I was valuable while I secretly felt like I was just less valuable than they were, you know? And then in 2009, I went to the TED conference for the first time and I saw person after person after person take the stage and deliver an unbelievably powerful talk. And I was like, whoa, you know, I've been a public speaker my whole life, but I have not been doing that. That is something else. And so I got very involved in the TED and TEDx communities. And I was volunteering for my friends who ran TEDx Santa Monica, one of the first ever TEDx events. And we had a guy come speak who was had all the hard skills in the world. And he had a topic that I was super excited to hear. And he was the main reason that I was so excited about this particular event. And when he got on stage and started to talk, everybody in the room checked out because he was so awkward and nervous that we all thought we were going to throw up. And I remember being super disappointed because it was just yet again an example of how somebody with a really great idea, a really great message, something really great to offer the world, got tripped up by their inability to express it well. And, you know, I was just super disappointed. And then I, you know, of course, the evil part of me was going, ha, 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 he can't do it. You know, guy with the hard skills, ha, ha. (laughs) You know, oh, there is that evil part of me. And then My buddy, Michael Weiss, walked over and he leaned down and he said, John, you know, we got to do something to help people like this. And I'm telling you, Dr. Sabrina, the clouds parted like the angels went, oh, you know, and I was like, if I just got over myself for five freaking minutes, if I stopped honoring this chip on my shoulder and I started honoring the people around me, I could make a total difference for someone like that. So I went home and because of that guy... I based everything that I did in the trainings that I started creating, I based it all in human evolutionary biology and human neurophysiology so I could show people not just what works when it comes to communicating with human beings, but why it works based in science. And, you know, the funny thing is, it just dawned on me about two or three weeks ago that, of course, that would work like a charm. It's based in science right? But I wasn't smart enough at the time to realize basing it in science would make it super effective. I just knew that was the only way I was going to ever get someone like that 
to do the things they needed to do. I couldn't just tell them what to do. I had to show them why, based in science, they ought to do something that seems to them, especially hard skills, like maybe it's a little frou-frou or touchy-feely or, you know, fluffy. Well, okay, you know, you could think that, but what I realized as I put this stuff all together is that communicating with human beings is not logical. It's biological. And when you understand the biology, you can make it logical again. But people who go in thinking logic by itself should win will just never be as effective as they could be if they got that there was more. And it's not all logic. You know, so that's where this came from. And, you know, I got to just thank that guy over and over and over again, because it was because of him that I based it all in this. I would have done something completely different without that moment when, you know, he was up on stage having a hard time and my buddy Michael Weiss said that. You know, I think a lot about that statement, if I just stop honoring the chip on my shoulder. And for me, that chip on my shoulder is nervousness, worrying what are other people hearing? What are, you know, am I getting my point across? And just all the chatter, the monkeys. And when we can put that behind us, that's where we really can shine and connect. And it's not just communicating, it's connecting with others that you're so good at helping us do. And one of the things that you talk about is creating our audience. Yeah. Can you share that? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I'm happy to. And I think that it's probably one of the most important things that I ever share with anybody. You know, it's the thing that I've just seen make an enormous difference for people all across the spectrum of how good they are already, how accomplished they are, how smart they are, how young they are. How, like it is, this is one of the big keys and I would love to share it with you. So I think what we should do is start by meeting the monkey. All right. So this is a two-step process that you do twice. And then there's a third piece that is access to success. So the first step, and this is something you're going to do twice because you're going to do it once for yourself and once for your audience. Yeah. And so the first step is to put the monkey mind on loudspeaker. Now, to do that, we got to meet the monkey mind. So I'm just going to be quiet for a second. We'll all be quiet. And we're going to meet the monkey mind. So here we go. Monkey mind? I don't have a monkey mind. Maybe this guy has a monkey mind. I don't have a monkey mind. I wonder what this guy looks like. Hmm. Where's that Mike guy? He hasn't said anything. Right? It's just the thing that's going blah, 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 right? You heard it, right? <laughs> Sounds kind of like you. Yeah? But here's the thing, the big key. That's not you. That's your monkey mind. It's a free prize inside. Every human gets one. It's like having an insane roommate. I think of it like my scared inner child because I want to have compassion even on my monkey mind. And so when it starts shrieking and being scared and saying bad things about everybody, I just pat it on the head and say, thank you. I got this. You know, it's okay. You relax. But that's your monkey mind. So I'm going to put my monkey mind on loudspeaker and create you guys first. So, you know, you and the audience out there. So my monkey mind, remember, this is not me. You're not responsible for all that nasty stuff, it says. My monkey mind saying, okay, you know, these are entrepreneurs from all over America. They're going to think that I'm too California woo-woo. They're not going to listen to me. They think that I'm, you know, they're going to be judging me. They think they're better than I am. They run actual businesses. I'm a one-man band, you know, blah, 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 blah. So that's the monkey mind, saying all kinds of stuff that's not actually going to help anything. So I take the monkey mind out of the driver's seat by putting it on loudspeaker, and I'm putting it in the back seat. And as you said, Dr. Sabrina, we're going to seat belt it in because it doesn't know how to use the seat belt yet. So we're just going to click it in there. It's safe. It's buckled in. I'm going to pat it on the head and say, thanks, I got this. And now I've got an empty driver's seat up here. And here's who you really are for me. This is step two. Step one is put the monkey mind on loudspeaker so you can get it in the back seat and belt it in. Step two is I'm going to create you as a matter of my word in a way that inspires me. So who you are is actually, you are great communicators who are interested 
and courageous. And I particularly love that you and your audience are entrepreneurs, people who are willing to undertake things. And that's where I think just about everything good in the world comes from. You know, I think the future is dependent on people like you and your audience. So now that makes me a lot more inspired to talk to you than the first stuff, you know? So that's the two-step process for the audience. For me, it looks very similar. Monkey mind about me. I'm a fraud. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm an imposter. If they only knew, you know, they're not paying me enough. They're paying me too much. Like it doesn't even have to make sense, right? It's just shrieking. So put it in the back seat, belt it in. And who I am for you, as a matter of my word, is a creation that's going to inspire me to be. I am the drill instructor for your greatness. I'm over there in your world and I'm playful mastery. And now I don't know if you can hear it, but I can hear it really loudly. The monkey is now shrieking from the seatbelt in the back. Who says you have mastery? Who, you don't have mastery. They're going to find out. You should just shut up and get out of here. Right? So I'm like, okay, thank you, little guy. Thank you. And I've just found that it works better when I act as if, you know, who cares if I do or not, I'm just going to bring playful mastery because that's what makes a difference. So those are the two steps twice. And then the third part, the third piece is very simple. It's three words. Hang in there because it is very tempting to go back to what, you know, just the natural order of things, which is listening to the monkey, right? I mean, for most of my life, I thought the monkey was me, you know? I thought that was me. It's not. So it is very tempting to fall into letting the monkey drive again and reaching back there and popping him out of the seatbelt. But, you know, I was in Slovakia and I did a four-hour presentation, Sabrina, and everybody was looking at me like just with the most sour puss expression, you know? And you know, for the first 15 minutes, I thought maybe they're just warming up. But man, by the end of the four hours, the monkey was shrieking. But because I had practiced hanging in there, I did not let the monkey drive. And at the end of my presentation, even though everybody had been looking at me like they had just, you know, eaten, you know, something that gave them a bad stomach ache, they all leaped to their feet and gave me a standing ovation. And then everybody came up to me afterwards and told me, thank you for coming, John. Slovakia needs you. And I was like, well, <laughs> why didn't you tell your face that like three hours ago? But because I had practiced creating myself, creating my audience and hanging in there, that went really well. If I had not practiced that, that would have gone really poorly. So now, I just made a connection because I hear yes. something from business owners a lot when I tell them you need to be having weekly team meetings and let's try to get your team members participating and sharing ideas so that you're not just up there talking. Yes. And inevitably they come back next week and they say, okay, I did this team meeting thing and they all just stare at me. <laughs> and, and I'm thinking that's probably what you felt like in Slovakia. It's just what I felt like. They're just scowling at me was the word I was looking for. Scowling. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of our listeners are probably thinking, you know, I'm not going to be a TED speaker. I don't know why I need this information that John Bates is sharing. And yet, Every single one of us is sharing stories and communicating as entrepreneurs. We're leaders in our yes. companies and being able to communicate effectively and deal with the Slovakian audiences that we sometimes find ourselves in front of yes. is really important. Well, and let's dig under that, Sabrina, because, you know, the Slovakian audience, I think that's a funny way to say it, right? Because I love Slovaks. They're fabulous people. They are deeply committed. They've been through some really tough things in their history. Like they got a lot going on. But if I let the way I thought they looked win, I would never have given them the best that I could give them, right? So when you're standing there in front of your team, 
if I'm standing up in front of my team and I think that their scowls mean that they don't care about what they do and they're not, they don't respect me and they're never listening and they don't care, well, then I'm going to talk to them a certain way. But if I get up and I know that their scowls just mean that they're really interested in what I'm about to say, they're maybe a little bit worried about what I think of them, they want to do a great job, so they're taking this very seriously, and underneath that exterior, they are deeply committed, loyal, loving human beings, I'm going to talk to them a totally different way. And that's the power of this. It's you know, and look, it's people are like, sometimes they're like, oh, so you're faking. I'm like, no, 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 no. You cannot fake this. If you fake this, it will fail miserably. What it really is, is getting clear on what's actually underneath all of this stuff that's just in appearance, right? Your team, you are deeply committed to them and they are deeply committed to you they're showing up every day, you know, they're giving their life to this. And so are you. So let's have the best in you talk to the best in them versus the monkey in you talking to the monkeys over there. That's not even you or them anyway. I have a bunch of stuff now. So the first thing is I'm sure, you know, I know that I'm never going to look at monkeys the same. And I'm sure a lot of our other listeners who heard that for the first time are going to think the same way. And I think, John, what makes you so special and your approach so special is that, you know, even for myself, when I first started doing some speaking engagements at a very low level, I tried to learn the tactical side of it. Yeah. Right? So how am I supposed to be a speaker? What am I supposed to bring? And what, you know, how am I supposed to do all these tactical things? But, yeah. you know, having a mindset shift to the human approach right, of how to get the head trash out, right, and how to get the monkey seat belted in the back seat, and, you know, even carrying that much further from just thinking of it as speaking, but it's how I'm acting on a daily basis with just humans around me, right, so it's my friends, my family, my coworkers, and all these people, so for other entrepreneurs that are stuck in that tactical mindset, what are some tips that you may have to kind of help them look at the other side, right? Like work towards a different mind shift and kind of move in a more productive, forward moving, you know, mindset, I guess, or just thought process. Okay. So that's good. And you brought up two things for me that I would really love to share that go along with that. The first one is that I believe that your nonverbal communication is not a percentage of your communication. You know, people say it's 75%. No, it's 85%. No, it's only 65%. That's a silly way to look at it. Your nonverbal communication sets the context for everything you say. So if the context that you're setting with your nonverbal communication is, I care about you, I'm here for you, I genuinely believe in you, that kind of stuff, then what you say is going to be received one way. If your nonverbal communication, however, is saying, I'm super uncomfortable, I'm worried about being judged, I'm not entirely sure of how I feel about this, blah, 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 then whatever you say is going to be heard in that context, and it's going to land differently. So it's not just for speaking, it's everywhere. So to really get yourself connected to what you're actually committed to versus the noise and the monkey mind and the head trash and the nervousness, that's going to dramatically impact your nonverbal communication, which will dramatically impact how everything you say lands. So that's number one. And then, you know, when you're out there speaking, it's not just from the stage, you know, it's for everywhere you communicate, because that's the fundamental thing that we're all doing every day, no matter what our job title, no matter what country, no matter what industry, we're all communicating. And you know, it comes down to me, really, there's, it's kind of simple on some level. Let me ask it this way, not just for speaking, but anytime, right? As a business owner standing in front of your team, like we get nervous. I know I do, you know, but at the end of the day, who is nervous about? That's a weird question, but who is nervous? <laughs> right. It's about you. Yeah. It's all yeah. about you. Yeah. So that's actually kind of a selfish way to be. Stop being so narcissistic, right? You're the business owner. You're the entrepreneur. You're the one that they're all looking at you, worried about what you think of them. 
So stop worrying about what they think of you and put <laughs> them at ease. Be there yeah. for them, you know? And it's so fundamental and it is a great, great speaker tool, Mike, but it is also a great, great life tool. You know, I'll give you the advice and it sounds like it's for a speaker, but just apply this everywhere. It's some of the best advice I ever got in my life. I got from two very different sources, but it's the same basic advice. One, no kidding, was Snoop Doggy Dog. I got to meet that guy and shake his hand. But he said back in the day, he was the D-O-double-G dog. He said, don't be nervous, be at their service. That is some brilliant. Now, what if you took that everywhere? Forget just speaking, right? What if you took that everywhere? Instead of being nervous, be at their service. Now, Candice, one of the top leadership trainers anywhere in the world taught me, same thing, said it a different way. And of course, it sounds like it's being from the stage, but what if you took this everywhere? Candace said, John, when you get up on stage, if you have your attention on yourself, then you have your attention on a minor ball of petty concerns that's of no real interest to anyone but you. <laughs> Ouch. She said, however, if you get up on stage and you have your attention on the audience and the difference that you're going to make for them and the difference they're going to make for the people in their lives because of it, well, now you've got your attention on something worth thinking about. Don't be nervous. Be at their service. And that is one of the most profound shifts that I think I see people make. And it's pretty simple, really. You know, like maybe it's simple, but not easy, but it's even pretty easy to just notice when you're nervous, you're in front of your all hands meeting, you're with that meeting with that really important client and the nerves kick in and the self negative self-talk, let that stuff go and show up to be there for them. It's an amazingly different experience. That is so powerful. Really I'm just imagining our audience. I've got them. I'm picturing them in my head and they're listening. And I just see some shifts happening right now because of that. And I would, there's so much that you have to share. We've only had just a little time here with you. I wish I could put so many of your insights on loudspeaker because rather than the monkeys on loud <laughs> well, thank um, you. <laughs> for our, our profit designers. And I know you have some amazing resources that you're coming here today with that we're going to put in our show notes. And I want to give you a moment to share those before we wrap up. One of those is great openings and great closings. Yeah. Two of the most important pieces of your talk, you know, if the openings arguably the most important, because if you lose them at the beginning, then all the content that you've got, that's really great. They don't even hear that. So, and this is a very short PDF and, you know, I tried to keep it short and very pithy. <laughs> so that's fantastic. So we're going to put a link to that in the show notes for folks to be able to download that. And then you were just telling us that you have a book that's available now on Amazon, your amazing itty bitty guide to being Ted worthy, 15 essential secrets of successful speaking based in human neurobiology. Yep. And you know, like you were saying, and like I try to remind people, it's not just for speaking. Yes, it is aimed at that, but this is the kind of stuff that will apply everywhere. Well, and John, one of the things that I really have taken from you is that, you know, we may not be TED speakers yet. And because TED is so popular, that has become the standard by which we are judged. So when we're standing up in front of our teams and when we're out there communicating and sharing our stories, Anything that we can do to be more effective in our communication and show up as more TED worthy is going to help us connect better with our audiences. That's right. I think that's absolutely right. Yeah. You know, Dr. Sabrina, one of the things we didn't actually talk about this before, so I don't mean to spring it on you, but I do have my online course, which I think you've at least oh. seen. I've been through it. It's amazing. So yes, please share that. You know, I would be happy to give you a discount code for people. That's typically 1997. 
you know, I'm happy to send you over a significant discount for your people just because you've made such a huge difference for me. Oh, wow. And, uh, so if that's something that's interesting, I'll get that off to you right away. Absolutely. And we will definitely get a link to that in the, the savings code in the show notes. Thank you for doing you that. Betcha. And we are watching closely because your book is about to come out. The working title of it is Speak Like a Ted Worthy Leader. Connect, Inspire, and Transform. Yeah. Wow. Go yeah, ahead. that's my full length book. And that's coming out. You know, the good news about the itty bitty guide is it's itty bitty. It's 30 pages, very fast read. I think it's actually a really good how to guide to just keep next to your desk. The Speak Like a Ted Worthy Leader is a full length book, and that's coming out going to the designer May 10th and then should be out within a month or two. And I'm really, really excited about that too. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being with us here today on the Profit by Design podcast. And Mike and I really want to invite you profit designers to pop into the Facebook group and share with us what nuggets you're taking away from this. What is shifting for you with your monkeys, with the audiences you're creating? And how are you being more aware of showing up and being of service as a result of today's conversation? So thank you, John. You're very well. It's absolutely a pleasure. I love what you guys are doing in the world. I love what you're bringing to the world. And, you know, I want people doing great things to be profitable. So yes. let's design that in, you know, I love it. Absolutely. I'm taking thank it on myself, by the way. Good. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Profit designers, are you taking your first steps toward a four-week vacation? If so, I would love to work with you and help you with that. Our Breakthroughs on the Bayou four-week vacation legacy retreat is filling up pretty quickly and the super early bird savings won't be available much longer. The retreat happens in March 2020. And if you are at all interested in joining us, I encourage you to head on over to fourweekvacation.com, take a look at the retreat, and be sure to download my four-week vacation jumpstart guide. That is free. It's a resource that I've created for you to help you get started getting your business onto that trajectory where it does not require your daily involvement. I have personally experienced the benefits of a four-week vacation and it is a game changer. And I want that for the rest of you. I want you to have that experience that you can take time away from your business, that you can enjoy your families, you can pursue hobbies or other interests. We have some four-week vacationers who are writing books on their time away from their business or doing other projects that they've wanted to get to but just never have the time for. The four-week vacation is an incredible experience for you as an entrepreneur and really elevates not just you but your whole team to a different level because it requires that you empower them and have them stepping up as leaders in the business. It's an amazing transformation. So check us out at fourweekvacation.com and download your jumpstart guide and start working on the initial steps towards your four-week vacation. Thank you for spending time with us today. Join our conversation in the Profit by Design podcast Facebook group. Share your thoughts on today's episode, ask us questions, and let us know what you want to hear about next. Visit our website at ProfitByDesignPodcast.com to access resources from our sponsors and tools we've created for you. Subscribe to the show on whatever platform you're listening to right now. There's a subscribe button right there. Go ahead and hit it so that you always get a notification when we release a new episode. And finally, share our podcast with a friend if you know a friend who would enjoy it. Thanks again for listening. This is real life business. Keep your chin up. Keep moving forward. You got this. <laughs>